Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin. I wanted to show you how to break down and clean a vintage fly reel. So what I have here is a 1950s Hardy Perfect 3 and 7 eighths inch reel. Um, this reel is an enamel painted reel. You can see it has a line guard. Um, it also has some wear to it. So um, I'll kind of show you the condition of this reel um, and kind of what it's going to come back to. Take apart the reel, going backwards. And you can see inside, there's a good bit of rust. Um, there's a lack of oil inside the spool. There's some built up oxidation. There's some built up just junk. Um, but really, when you look in here, I mean, it's almost a little bit of rust and old grease and just all kinds of junk um, inside the chuck mechanism. You can see that it hasn't been oiled. It just needs a good cleaning. So, um, start off breaking everything down to what you feel comfortable uh, taking apart. So for me, I'm gonna take out these paws. Some of these things can be pretty hard to get apart too, so just be careful. Err on the side of caution. If you don't feel comfortable taking something apart, leave it in there. So I'm gonna kind of work on these springs, but don't feel, the worst thing you can do is, is go and break something here. Um, so I'm gonna give these springs a little work. So there's a lot of gunk that was built up in rust. And you can see how those springs came off and just even looking at my fingers, you can see the dirt and all the, just the gunk that's built up in there. So this is as far as I feel comfortable breaking this reel down. Got my two springs, my two paws, got my spool, got my winding plate. You can see that it's, uh, that's where I'm at. So the next step is uh, you wipe everything down with Q-tips and uh, paper towels, just anything you can do to just start to really get this gunk out. And uh, wadded up paper towel, just kind of run everything around. And so there's still a lot of dirt coming off in there too. You can just keep on going. This is an enamel reel, so you're not wearing off a, a painted leaded finish um, with some of the earlier reels. This one you can kind of get to scrubbing a little bit more. So with that, I'm gonna move over to my spool. See there's some gunk in here and we're going to do some baths later on so it's not as important to get everything off you just want to try to get as much loose stuff off as you can just before you even put it into the water so the spool looks pretty good i've got the uh, spool there got my main part of the reel there now i'm going to move over onto the winding plate You can see in the windy plate here, it almost looks like some, just a mix of everything. I mean, there's some kind of much of a rust. There's a little bit of old oil. There's a, just kind of, and you can start to feel it. As you can see, I'm leaving thumbprints on there as I'm moving it, so it's gonna come loose, so. What I found, and kind of through internet research and through trial and error, uh, warm water, you want to submerge this whole, all these pieces in warm water um, for 15 minutes at a time. You pull them out, you start scrubbing again. So uh, the solution is warm water with uh, vinegar. It's one part vinegar, four parts water is kind of the recommendation. I go a little less than that. Um, I'm more, uh, I'll take half of that four parts, so kind of one part vinegar, eight parts water. Um, just to be careful, you're really just trying to break up this grease, give it something to adhere to, and then really start to kind of work on it again with all these paper towels and Q-tips. Um, so go ahead and set up my container here, and uh, I'll measure out some water and vinegar. And for the vinegar, it's just plain old white vinegar from the store. Drop everything in, all your pieces. All your springs, all your paws, everything goes in there. And you just let it sit. Okay, now it's been about 10 minutes and we're gonna pull all the pieces here. You can see that some of this dirt is starting to break loose. You can see some bubbles starting to form. So I'm gonna pull everything out 
and I'm gonna give everything again a good hard scrub, Q-tips, and paper towels. So you can see this is already starting to come looking pretty good. Um, and with each one of these wheels, you gotta treat them a little differently. I'm starting to see the paint's kind of coming loose in here a little bit with this with this oxidation. And I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with this reel than I would with other ones. And I'm actually only gonna leave it in there probably for another 10 minutes. And we'll come back in about 10 minutes. All right, so this reel's had its second bath here. Um, like I said, these reels, they're all individual. Um, whatever, how much build up there is on each one, which you have to do. So this one, I'm, I think I'm gonna probably be done with it. Um, I don't need to spend much, much more time on it. And uh, what I can do now is uh, give it a final good cleansing over, good scrub, get everything kind of one last go at it. So uh, let's just put down, there's some dirt on the towel. So I'm going to put down the long surface there. So again, pull out all the pieces. I'm going to move my water to the side in case I need to dip a little bit as I'm cleaning. Take a look, just really also trying to get all the vinegar water off. Um, just dry it off and get those last bits of gunk that are stuck on. So you can really start to see just all that grime that was there in the, uh, in the brass really is coming off. Um, the part I was just working on right there see how it looks better than everything else. So um, it's just a matter of personal preference, how deep you want to go, how much time you want to spend um, with anything. It's how much effort you want to put into cleaning these things and getting them absolutely spotless or just making them serviceable and getting a little bit of, getting most of the dirt off there so they're, they're really functioning correctly. The next step is going to be some dish soap and this is only going to be for probably like five to ten minutes and what it's going to be is just enough to kind of neutralize that vinegar. Um, we want to get all that stuff out of there so we're going to take a little, when I say a little bit I mean one drop, that's all I need. Stir it all up good, get a little bubbles. Stuff down the side. And I'm a little bit short on water, so I noticed I used a different, um, different container than what I used previously. And the reason I did that was that I don't want any of that leftover vinegar in there. I want it to be as clean as I can get it. Let this sit for a bit, and uh, when it comes out of this uh, this dish soap, we're gonna give it a final rinse through some cold water, and then we'll let it sit overnight. So I'll be back tomorrow, let it sit overnight, completely dry out, air dry, and we're back to kind of finish it off. All right, so we got our reel here, it sat out all night, uh, air dried, all the parts are dry on it now, and it's time to reassemble. So I've got all my pieces, I got my springs, my paws, my three pieces here. I also have some quantum hot sauce, the hot sauce oil and the hearty oil to, uh, to lube this thing up and get it ready for use. So first thing is I'm going to put my springs back in, um, pretty much the same way that I took them all out. So I'm going to go and do that. So now I'm time to put the paws in. So this is a right hand retrieve reel. And so what that means is that I'm on the reel mounted onto a rod, I use my right hand to retrieve. And this is where things can get a little tricky with people who 
uh, flip pause, and over the years, a uh, reel might be to you and it might not be to the right calibration. So, for a correct right handed reel retrieve, um, what you'll see is you've got your spring pushing down on there like this, and your paw orientation should be such that the open side is facing towards the back, like so. What that'll do is as these, as the gear wheel here spins this way, it'll be hitting against the open side of the paw. Put it right there. So you hit against the open side, which is an easier open, and then it go, if it goes the other way, that's more, uh, more of a move and more pressure to put on there, so that's how you get a little bit of a retention in your drag. So right there is the correct orientation for a right hand retrieve with the opening facing towards the rear of the reel. Uh, for this reel here, it's actually a double um, engaging spare. So this spare paw here could actually be engaged as well, or you can leave it unengaged. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to engage it, so I wanna make sure that it follows the same way that it goes there. So you can see in this orientation that the, yeah, I'm getting the light there, that both sides that hit are gonna be the open sides as this reel comes. It's gonna hit here, hit the open, over there, hit the open. The reason I left them both engaging is that this is gonna be a steelhead reel, and it gives it a, a little bit more pressure. Um, I'm gonna use this on a switch rod, and will give me a little bit more pressure on the outgoing to kind of work as a little bit of a drag. Um, you can also use this tensioner, which functions up and down. As it goes down, it tightens up the, the pressure put on the spring. I leave that right about in the middle. So, now we've got, our internal part of the main main part of the reel done here and it's time to do a little bit of uh, oil on it. I mentioned before that I've got the Quantum hot sauce. I've got the hot sauce oil. This usually comes in a two pack. I think it's $10, $15. Um, this was came under recommendation from a lot of forums. You'll see a lot of people have like red grease wrapped around the reel. Over the years I've tended to sh go away from this and I use the actual hearty real oil lubricant, let's see if it'll come into focus there for you. Um, but this is the oil that Hardy sells. Um, they get out trade shows and things like that. Uh, much more inclined to use this for two reasons. One, to show you kind of what, how the hot sauce comes on. Hot sauce comes on as a very thick, almost paste. So you can see here that that's really this kind of gunky, thick stuff. And I think it's almost too thick, to be honest with you. Um, it'll hold any dirt, if your reel happens to take a dunk, it'll automatically suck in any sediment that's in the water and um, it holds and really traps dirt. I prefer the, the oil. So what I'll do here with the oil is I'll put a, two drops into the ball bearing race. Actually, we'll do four because this one's pretty dry. So put them at the four corners, just kind of give a little bit of spin. And those are all lubed up pretty good. And now here, any, any place that there's movement is where I like to put it, some grease. So behind the paw there, on the spindle, behind the paw there, on the spindle, um, on the tension adjuster there, put it on the top at the bottom. And then I also like to put a drip inside the spindle right there. And I'll flip it over and I'll do two here as well. I'll do one on the inside right there. I'll do one on the inside right there. So that takes care of where I put my oil on the inside of the main part of the reel. When you go to the face plate, I'll do the same thing here with the spindle at the base because this is what touches the ball bearing race. I'll put one drop right there. And I put one drop right at the top of the threads there. Just gonna put that in, drop that down. You can see it seats in and that oil got in everywhere pretty good. The, uh, here on the spool, I'll do one quick drop on the inside. Um, I might be over oiling. Um, I, rather oil too much than not enough, it comes off, it's fine. I'll drop my spool in there, put my face plate in, and reattach. Get a nice strong check as well on the incoming, on the outgoing, more tension. So I've got all that oil nice and smooth through. Uh, you can actually do that and you can break it down back inside you'll see that there's no real tough spots of oil anymore. Um, you can move that tension adjuster up and down one time and just through the through the range just to get some oil on that. Um, the ball bearings up there nice and oiled up. Everything seems to be good to go.
What you can also do um, is if you have a nice kind of like a rag um, you know, on some of the leaded finish reels, I'll also just kind of put some oil in here. This is an enamel finish reel. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna put any oil in there. But as you start to see oil kind of work its way out um, through the spindle, um, it'll come out through here. If you give it a little Try to keep your eye open. Um, you can just kind of wipe it away. But there you go. That's uh, thank you to uh, there's a guy on one of the forums. It goes by Bulldog on the Classic Rod Forum. He did a really de depth, detailed post about this. Helped a lot of people out. I've asked him some questions in the past. Um, he's been pretty knowledgeable. So that's how you uh, clean and break down a classic Hardy reel. Um, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like down below. Um, or also appreciate a comment. Um, I've got a bunch of other videos that I've done. Um, feel free to, to click through here. There's fly time videos, there's gear videos, there's uh, the whole range. So as more stuff comes up, if you're subscribed, you'll get a notification. But please like, comment, share, let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good one.